Uh, hey everyone, Mitch here at the bike shop once again. Today, doing something a little different. We have a bicycle here that's been ridden on the indoor trainer quite a lot. This gentleman has done enough mileage recently to totally wear out a trainer tire, so we're going to look at how to change the tire. Uh, we're going to look at the tire and then look at a couple of little maintenance things that might help you keep an eye on the condition of your bike as you're spinning away through the winter here. So the person who's been riding this bike has totally blown through the tire here. This is a trainer tire, which has a much higher durometer rubber than an outdoor tire. So these are made to last a long, long time on the indoor spin bikes. You never wanna ride these tires outdoors if you have one of these colored tires that are made for indoor use. They are too hard to ride safely outdoors. It'd be quite slippery. What we see here though is on this gentleman's bike, we've blown right through the tire. So this thing is completely done. I happen to know that this gentleman here has ridden 63 days consecutive indoors on his trainer. Now, if you're doing that, I applaud you. However, if you have some semblance of sanity, you won't do that, obviously. First little tip I might note here if, I, if this bike came into the shop, I might suggest that uh, if you've really worn that much of a bead out in the center of your tire, you wanna back that tension off on your trainer slightly. This has probably got a little too much pressure from the actual trainer roller on the tire that's probably contributed to this wear. Also, if you don't keep an eye on your tire pressure, uh, it will wear out much faster. So this tire might have been run a little bit soft or had a little bit too much pressure applied to it on the trainer, okay? But we're gonna swap this out here and go through the steps. One other thing I noticed just as we're first starting to look at the bike here, definitely too much oil on this guy. Uh, if you can see like a thick film of oil on your bike or chain, that's too much. You wanna take off more oil. So after you lube your bike, take off as much oil the chain. After you oil the chain, you wanna take off as much of that oil as you can with the rag. So this bike again, way, way too much. We, need, we, can, we can get away with far less. Okay, so we're gonna now run through the steps to change out uh, this worn out tire with a fresh one. This is an indoor spin bike tire, but the same steps will apply to your regular bike. So first thing we wanna do that's gonna make our life easier is we wanna get the bike into the gear that allows for the most slack on the chain. So not our big rings, we wanna get the bike down to our small ring. So I'm gonna shift it down. Small ring up front, and the hardest gear out back. So now there's a lot of slack on our chain. What I like to do here is I'll flip my bike over. Okay, so just because this bike has a bolt on uh, axle, we have to use a couple five mils to get the wheel out. Some bikes will just have a quick release to take off. Whichever method you need to use to get your wheel off the bike is the next step here. Okay, so there's our trainer adapter axle for this particular bike. We'll just set that aside. Now we can get the wheel out of the bike. Easiest way to do that, we're gonna clean this chain up for sure. Uh, easiest way to do that, now that we're in our small and small ring with the bike upside down, I can just push the derailleur out of the way, lift the wheel up, bring it out of the bike. We'll just tuck that aside. Let's just bring this up so we can see a little more. And hopefully you can see there the deformation and the wear I'm talking about in this tire. Too low of tire pressure or too much pressure from the trainer roller. So we'll pop this out of here. Take our collar off the valve. Take our valve cap off, we'll put that down. I'm gonna unwind the valve core of the Presta valve, hold it up to let air out. And I'm gonna give the tire a quick roll on the ground as I'm holding it, that'll let a little bit more air escape from the inner tube, so it would make it a little easier to get off. Now, first step uh, from this point is to break the bead of the tire. So what you do here is put your thumbs on the back side of the rim, fingers on the tire opposite your thumbs, and pinch them towards each other. So do that all the way around. So it's known as breaking the bead free. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side as well. This tire's pretty loose though, it's a pretty easy one. Sometimes these will fight you a little bit. That's okay though. So now we're gonna grab our tire lever. Using our thumb, I'm gonna pull the bead back. This is the bead of the tire here. I'm gonna pull it back from the rim, slide my tire lever in, fold it over, and then slide around to release the tire. Okay, so now we have the one side completely off. I'm gonna find the valve, fold the tire over the valve hole, push the valve up, get our tube out. In this case, our tube's fine. The tube is not flat. We're just changing this because the tire's worn. And then now you can just pop the tire off last step. See, that sucker's pretty nicely worn. That person got their money's worth out of that one for sure, I'd say. Okay, so we've got a replacement here. This is, appears to be the same product. Okay, we got that 
Get that out of there. Don't need that part. Open this tire up. There we go. Nice fresh one. Grab your rim again. Find where the valve hole is. See, add the, the Pro Touch to it, of course, of course. You're gonna line your tire logo up with the valve hole. This is a trainer tire. Are these things directional, Jesse? Do you know? Does it really matter? There, it's a directional trainer tire. Such is the state of the society we live in now. This is incredible. Well, the store's just closing, so the phone's gonna start to ring now for the next hour. <laughs> okay, so we've uh, mounted up our one, first bead of the tire, the replacement. It's gonna help us to mount it well to put a little bit of air in the tube. You can hook up your pump, just give it a couple pumps. Or with the Presta valve ones, you can just blow a little bit of air into it. Just enough so it holds its shape, like so. Go back to our tire, starting at the valve hole. Same routine I did to get the valve out. I'm gonna fold the bead of the tire over the valve hole, place the valve in, and now I'm gonna tuck the tire, or the tire over top of the tube. Might have a little bit too much air in it, but we'll see here. So now you can see where we're at here. We've got the tire in the tire, but that's not good enough. We need to get it into the rim bed, the actual uh, inner portion of the rim. If we try and put the tire on here and now, it's a good chance we'll pinch the tube, just causing a flat. So now what we're gonna wanna do is go around, roll that tube into the rim. And I do have a little bit too much air in it, so I'm gonna just let it touch out. And run around until you see that tube sitting in the actual rim bed now. You can see the difference whereas before it was sitting just in the tire, now we've got it in the rim there. Now I've got that, I'm gonna go back to the valve again. And now this is where the technique comes in for mounting these things. You don't wanna use your tire lever if possible. You wanna just be able to use your hands. It's the safer way to do it. So kind of the opposite of the technique we did use before we're gonna put our thumbs on the back side of the rim, fingers on this side of the rim. We're gonna pinch the bead but towards us. I'm gonna slide my hands outwards in both directions simultaneously. You don't just work one way, work both ways at the same time. I'm gonna just pinch, 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 and work my way around the tire here. Once I get halfway, I'm gonna shift, make sure I got the tube in there all the way. and shift to my thumbs. Pinch, 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 pinch. Work your way around until you get to the very end. That's the hardest part, of course. Once you get to a point with this where you can't just work the tire on with your hands alone, come back to the valve. I'm gonna grab the whole tire tube combo and I'm pinching and dragging outwards. That's gonna pull any slack we have in the system down to the end. And let's see if that got us any further. Yeah, so that got us closer. So now we almost have it. You can see where the tire is transitioning from being seated, which is the bead in the rim, to not seated, the bead out of the rim. That's where we're gonna use our hands and we're gonna roll it on side by side. So I'm gonna move this forwards here. I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna come back to this side, give it a roll, back to this side. And we're just gonna work it back and forth until we hear a very satisfying snap, hopefully. Ah, it was medium satisfying. I'm gonna give that a six out of 10. Sometimes a little crisper, you know? Get that nice pop going, Jesse. That's what you wanna see. <laughs> and then I'm gonna give it one more pinch again, going around, just making sure the tube's not bulged out anywhere I don't want it to be. That all looks pretty good. So now we can come back to the, our tube here. Okay, so that seems to be working fine. We'll do a little check here before we go up to our actual op. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, that was nice. Did you hear that? Good. Satisfying, it's that bead snapping into place. 
So I'll show you how to check to make sure it's, it is seated correctly. Uh, before we go straight up to our top pressure, we're gonna give it a um, quick check, make sure we don't see any, the tube trying to pull its way out of the tire here that we're pinching it. And I'll show you a quick little test here. If you're, if you're unsure of if you have the tire mounted correctly, you can give it the spin test. What you're looking at is the profile of the tire should be consistent the whole way around. If you see it ducking or dipping around, that means we need to go back a step and put a little more pressure in or reseat it. So I'm gonna give it a spin. You can see it hopping, which we can. We know we're not quite done our job yet. So you can see that one little hop, hop, hop. So in this case, that means it's probably not seated on us somewhere. There's a little spot there. So we're gonna add a little more pressure and see if we can hear a nice, nice crisp snap as it seats itself. Oh. Well, there we go. So now up to 90 PSI. And now we'll give it another spin, see how it looks. So now you can see nice and consistent profile. It's not hopping around on us. So that's good, that's good to go. And that, that's it, it's on. We're gonna throw it back on the bike now. We're gonna find our collar for our valve. Valve cap if you want. There we go, she's done. Just gonna give, we're just gonna give that cassette the tiniest little little wipe down there, a little bit of, little bit of oil on there. I'm not sure if I'd called out that guy yet or not. <laughs> yeah, if you wanna try and you know clean up your own drivetrain at home, you can buy a nice cleaning tool that will, you know, wrap the chain. You know, keep all the solvent isolated so you're not gonna make a big mess if you're in a, say, an apartment or a condo. Um, the best thing to do is to, of course, take the parts off the bike and clean them properly, but we don't expect anyone at, you know, to do that at home. That's, there's facilities for that, there's bike stores to hire to do that. Okay, we're gonna get this wheel back in the bike now. So we're gonna sit in the frame, set the chain down on it. And this bike's got disc brakes, we gotta make sure we're lining up that uh, caliper there. There we are. And this bike, of course, has the uh, trainer skewer here, our special trainer axle, so we're gonna throw this guy back in. Find the magic combination of angle. I'm gonna give that side a snug down. That's actually threaded it into the frame now. And then I'll just tighten the re retaining uh, screw on the other side. You can argue at great length about whether it's a screw or a bolt. Typically you'll find older people doing that, not me. Personally, I'm indifferent. Let's give that a snug down, make sure we're golden. There we are. So there we are, wheels back on. Ready to pound out some more trainer miles. This time, perhaps with a slight more uh, attention paid to the pressure we're running. It'll probably give us a little bit longer lifespan out of this. Again though, did I mention the person who did this committed these atrocities, these crimes against tired? 63 days consecutive? Like what? <laughs> no, sir. Get outside. Okay, there we are. Bike's ready to go. Still gonna be a couple more months of uh, questionable weather here on the island. So given the amount of mileage this guy's done so far this winter, he definitely needs that new tire. And uh, yeah, you're good to go. There we are.